Welcome to the weekend. Welcome to what we are working on. We watched the Netflix documentary, The Minimalists. Highly recommend that. So it definitely is kept in line with where our brains are currently at moving from this 2,800 square foot farmhouse and doing what we do for a living. We are online resellers, uh, if you are new to the channel. And trying to figure out what we are keeping and what we can get rid of and what we have to keep for, uh, obviously, online inventory that we have to fit into the bus. So, Rich collected, or has collected, a lot of these antique old, yeah, old, tools. Old vintage and antique tools. Um, I really get into the nostalgia of using the antique tools that are period correct when restoring or working on antique furniture. It's just like a bond between you, the tooling, and the piece of furniture that just, it can't be, it can't be, you know, duplicated with using modern stuff. I mean, just the artist, uh, the artistic talent and, and you know, it, that went into the tooling itself while working on some beautiful antique pieces is just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, some of the work that was done with these tools is, you know, it's a lost art. You know, stuff is so mass manufactured and slapped together and, you know, ship it off and send it on down the road and collect our, uh, you know, a few dollars here or there off Amazon and all these other big box stores. You know, they doesn't have the pride in the craftsmanship that somebody put in, you know, 50 to 100 years ago while, you know, assembling furniture and creating furniture and creating the tooling itself. Um, I just love it. I can't get over stuff like this. It's just absolutely incredible. But even, you know, the look of this screwdriver alone, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And it's a Stanley. So even these real you know, early stand real early you know well known tooling companies that still make good tools today you know they started with a great craftsmanship and you know an artistry with their tools and no wonder why they have such a strong foothold today I mean they really really you know put pride into their work and that's what I love about it so what we're doing right now is basically going through all our stuff. What we need to list, like this table, I had had this table, we've had this table for months. We bought it at an auction, one of Casey's auctions. Love this, a friend of mine made that. Amazing, that's going in the bus. <laughs> but we bought this table at an auction. It is Italian marble, it's beautiful, it's super freaking heavy. I just never listed it, I don't know why, it just, it ended up just getting sat here. Finally took pictures of it. Finally got it listed. Uh, somebody did, like, reinforce the underneath side of these legs, and it doesn't look all that great. So that dropped the price. I paid 20 for it, not noticing that. Uh, so I did only list it for 60 bucks. Other than that, there's no damage to the table, and it is extremely structurally sound. It's super sturdy. But I have somebody coming around 3.30 to hopefully purchase this for 60 and then I have another possible sale set up on Facebook Marketplace for later today. I just don't know an exact time. This mirror. We garbage picked this mirror a while ago. I cannot figure out why it's not selling. I have it listed for 25 bucks. Hopefully it will go today. We did also sell something on eBay and something on Etsy, so I'll get that stuff out. Uh, but I've been testing bins, these plastic like storage bins, to see what size is gonna fit the best in the bus bins. These bins, these storage bins outside of the bus. This is what I'm talking about. They're actually really big. Let me get this up and open. I mean, they're a pretty good size. So I've been testing the size of the bins that I have already just kind of laying around here. And that blue one seems to fit the best. And for anybody that's following along and wants to know what's going on with the bus, obviously it's still in our driveway. Uh, we have been in contact with the uh, enforcement officer, the uh, guy who gave us the violation notif notice thing, uh, saying that it was a commercial vehicle. The state of Michigan says it's not a commercial vehicle. It does not have air brakes. 
We don't need a special license to drive it. I can drive it. <laughs> There's no seats in it. It is literally a one passenger vehicle currently. Uh, weight class is under, it's got to be like 20, uh, 26, thousand I think 26,001 I believe pounds to be considered a commercial vehicle this is under 19,000 empty um, so we had some leg to stand on we sent all of our copies to the enforcement officer and he said if there was any issues that he would call us right back he hasn't called us back yet now it's a weekend we kind of have to wait till Monday which I hate, I don't like not knowing what's going on because the notice we got on the 20th, today I think is the 26th, and it's a 10-day notice. So they're saying um, that the bus had to be moved within 10 days, uh, which is like the 30th, and we don't even know if we're good. Um, I'm at this point assuming that if he hasn't called us back, then we're good, but I hate assuming. I need to know that we're good. Um, but the state of Michigan has deemed this a personal passenger vehicle. Just, a, you know, like a big SUV. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, that clears us and we're good and it can stay right here so we can work on it. Because we don't have a backup plan. If we have to move this, we don't have anywhere to move it to. Uh, we finally turned the heat on. I couldn't take it anymore. It's, it's getting really freaking cold outside. It's October 26th. I did pretty well. I've, I don't know if I've ever actually made it to November 1st. That's always like my goal. If I can make it to November 1st, I'm, I'm winning in life. And I don't know if I've ever actually made it. I think this might be the closest I've ever gotten, but I was freaking cold this morning. Made Rich turn on the furnace. But this is the pile of stuff that we sold online today. We'll start with this doodad. I got this at an estate auction and it was like a pile of stuff for a dollar. So I really don't even have any money invested in this thing. It's from the 40s. It's got some age. It shows its age, but it's still really cute for decoration. Sold that on eBay for $15. No offer, just straight up purchase. I don't know when the last time I sold something without actually taking an offer on it. Like they just, they just purchased it. It was a surprise purchase. There was no, you know, haggling involved. I love that. And then this, I'm gonna actually have to read this off of our eBay listing because Rich is not here and I know nothing about this thing. It is a David White Instruments Company Transit Level Plum Survey Model 8027 with the original case. He auctioned this off and it ended up selling for $31. So I guess that's good. I don't really know. <laughs> we got it for free. One of our neighbors uh, is clearing out some stuff. And that was in the pile of things that he gave to us to do whatever with. So we don't have any money invested in it. So $31 is a uh, profit, which I'm happy about. I don't know if that's a good profit or not. These guys I bought at Salvation Army. And originally, I think I bought four of them. I'm pretty sure I have one left. Yep, I do. I can see it. It's right there. That's not listed. One is at the antique booth, I do believe. And then these two I had stuck up on eBay and Etsy. They ended up selling on Etsy for 20 bucks. So not bad. I think I paid two apiece for them at Salvation Army. I just love the old advertisements. I just get a kick out of that. It, there's just something about it. It's, I mean, it's not even nostalgic for me because this was before my time. I was born in the 80s. So this is way before my time, I think. Pretty sure. This is like 60s. But I just, I just freaking love it. So 20 bucks for two of them is not bad. We are already in profit from the four I originally picked up. I'm going to get this stuff boxed up and hopefully I can get it shipped out today. But the post office does close at two and it is already almost noon, so I need to hurry up. Hey, so Rich is home, and check this out. The other day, he put a post up on Facebook Marketplace basically saying, this is what we're doing. We're building out a schoolie conversion. It will be our house. If you guys have any building materials that you're not going to use, and made a list of anything that we could or would use in the bus. 
Somebody gave us insulation. There are quite a few pieces of uh, not used R30 insulation for our schoolie conversion. Yay! Just the good stuff. I mean, this is what we want. We're building it as if it's a house because it will be our house. It will be our house. So we're gonna put the. I mean, we're not gonna work on it today, but we're gonna put this in the bus. I mean, clearly, it's not enough to do the entire bus. We're doing the floor. We are doing the walls. We're doing the ceiling. We're going to need a lot of insulation, but this is insulation that we don't have to purchase. We don't have to pay anything for this. So that's just a leg up on what we're doing. And the same guy gave Rich this uh, Delta faucet. It's brand new. I don't think it's something that we will end up using. Let me see. No, it's like a sink faucet. Okay, I don't know which one of these it is. I don't know what's going on here. But it is some sort of faucet. If we don't use it, I can't even figure out if this is the one. This makes no sense to me. I don't understand this. But if it's not something that we can use in the bus, the guy already said that we can stick it online if we can make a few bucks for it and use it for something that we can use for the bus, he's all for it. So, cool. Okay, I believe this is what we have going on here which is not something that I think we can use, but that's okay. Somebody else can use it. We'll just stick it on uh, eBay. And just like that, one coffee table is gone, $60. And the other coffee table takes its place. I will likely get pictures of this one soon and get it listed for like 40, 45. And I have another coffee table downstairs that can take its place if it sells. The other one is listed, it's just not selling for some reason. This whole area looks strange without all the stuff. Rich got this listed today, which is good because it's been sitting here since, I don't know, like May, <laughs> something like that, May, June. Got it with a bunch of other crap at an auction. He's stuck, I guess it's like, it's a pretty significant uh, mid-century piece. I don't know if you guys can really see it. It needs a lot of work, but it's a cool piece if somebody is willing to put the time and effort into it. And I found the piece I was looking for. Uh, this mirror is jinxed. This is like, I couldn't even tell you how many times I've set up pickup on this thing. It's still not getting picked up. The guy remeasured his space and says it's not gonna fit. So it's still staying here. Since we're having more of this beautiful fall monsoon, it kind of ruined our plans to go to the park lantern walk tonight. So we're gonna go to Lowe's and check out some stuff for the bus. I think we're gonna skip past all the Christmas decorations and go check out the appliances first. See, now I feel like we're, with the tile, that's where we can really kind of be creative and make a little bit of a statement. We're in such a small space. I feel like the bathroom tile and the backsplash in the kitchen, we can really do something neat with and it not be like overbearingly too much. I've seen some like glass tiles, backsplash, ooh, like something like this. Kind of like that color too. That, for a backsplash I thought would be really neat. And then I really like the white subway tile for bathrooms as well, although I feel like we're gonna get really expensive if we, <laughs> if we go subway tile. I don't know. I don't know. I like the green tones though of like the glass tiles. Eh. See, I feel like that's too glittery. I'm not really a glittery kind of girl. I'm kind of a let's hang out at the scrapyard kind of metal gun stock kind of girl. <laughs> Moving on to floors. We didn't really find anything super great in the tile department, but this is the kind of stuff that Rich would like to stay with flooring wise. Very, very durable, and you know, having the multiple weather changes and stuff like that, and traveling around, a lot of exposure to dry climate and then humidity, and having snow, dogs, snow, wind, and rain, all that sand on your feet, you know, all that kind of stuff. This type of flooring will definitely hold up longer and will need less maintenance compared to actual hardwood flooring. And plus, putting actual hardwood flooring in is going to be a pain costly and it will add more weight and also take away from how much height you have between floor to ceiling. For this so if that, we stick with this stuff we're looking at about 200 plus dollars in just flooring. I mean I guess that's not too bad. That's not that bad. 
so many sinks so little time I already like have a basic concept of what I want my sink to look like and it's not any of these <laughs> I do I think I might just want a single basin though like I kind of like the size and shape of that one and we already have a faucet I like that one I'm not even gonna lie I do I do like that one so this is what I was about to say like this is the kind of faucet that we have it's like such an awkward angle because it's on a wall. Um, but it's got like the spray thing that comes off. I don't need something like ridiculously big. Obviously we're putting it in a bus. Um, I don't necessarily think I need two basins. I kind of like the way that the one basin, but I only have to clean one. Easy. All right, we need help from the troops because I don't really understand this. So we're looking at foam board insulation, right? And we're trying to figure out, we're thinking like one inch on the floor, and then we're going to do Pink Panther on the ceiling. But like, okay, this is a one inch foam board. Our value, 75 degrees Fahrenheit mean. What the heck does that even mean? Yeah, it should be WTF mean. Like, I don't get this. How do we know what the R value is and what's a good R value for a floor? Help. Please help. This one doesn't even say. I don't get this. All right, I might have just figured it out on my own. I just figured this out. Half inch, three, three quarter inch, 3.8, one inch, five. I think our Pink Panther is rated for 30. So this sucks compared to the Pink Panther. All right, I'm moving on from that because it's frustrating me. But I did see in another video somewhere when you're looking for cedar boards to check the closet area and sure enough natural closet cedar boards that's what we want to do our ceiling with Ooh boy i think we found this is what i want to do with our walls i think it'll look really good with the cedar on the ceiling give it a nice whitewash it'll look nice against the darker reddish toned floorboards. I like it. Pumpkin spice I wish we wrenches. had smell-o-vision YouTube. Seriously, smell-o-vision. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh, if you weren't $50, I would own you. But uh, we're going to sign off. We've made it through the whole store and we're back to the pumpkin spice aisle. I am, I am, a failed white girl. I can't stand that smell. I can't stand that taste. So we're out of here. Peace out, yo.